Right, well, here we are again inside London Scottish, and you can see outside London Scottish too, as we here. I'm delighted to be joined by Adam Kleeberger uh, this week. And, uh, Klebs, um we're nearing the end of the season now. And, uh, well, as you know, you've been nominated for the Watches of Switzerland Supporters Player of the Year, or Player of the Season, which is pretty phenomenal, seeing as you've only been here half a season. So you've clearly made quite an impact. But before we talk about that, for the benefit of people who don't really know a lot about your playing background, tell us a little bit about where you're from and some of the clubs you've, you've played for. Um, well, I grew up in a place in uh, British Columbia, Canada called White Rock. Started playing rugby when I was uh, 14 in high school. Um, played the uh, the age grade representative teams for, for my province and then for my country. Uh, actually went to Australia for a year when I was 18. I uh, just played some club rugby. Uh, more recently, I played in at Rotherham two years ago. Played in uh, Auckland in the ITM Cup uh, half a year ago or a year ago, and then uh, obviously now here with London Scottish. Quite a CV when you look at it. And have you found with those sort of playing in Australia, playing in New Zealand, playing in Rotherham, which is a, again a different part of the world? No offence if you're from Rotherham, by the way. But the style of rugby is that different? Have you found the way you've travelled around the world? Uh, yeah, I think every country has sort of their own take on how the game's supposed to be played. I think. Um, it's definitely a lot more physical um, here than I've experienced maybe in some places like New Zealand and uh, tends Australia. to be more continuity of play there, does it, and more sort of open, as it were, rather than the the, the breakdown and, and the emphasis on yeah, the yeah. I think that's fair. Um, they, I mean, there's definitely big uh, positives and negatives to to both sides of play, though. Now, look, you look as though you're a man to me. When I watch you, you enjoy the big hit up and the big smash. Am I right there? Uh, I think it co sort of comes with uh, playing the back row, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and certainly you're not uh, afraid to make a, a step forward. And actually, our back row this season has been tremendous, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly with Brighty and yourself and so on, and James and all, everyone who's played in the back row, quite a physical back row, and you need it at this level. Yeah, I think, I think it's great that we have so many players that can interchange and uh, none of them seem to uh, miss a beat. And since you were playing at Rotherham, how long ago was that? Uh, it's two years ago. Two years ago. Have, have you noticed a difference in the size and the physicality since two years ago of the championship, or is it sort of more or less the same? I think it's been fairly consistent, to be honest. Um, I mean, it was physical back then, and it's, it's still physical. It's pretty physical. Um, just it, it always depends on which teams you're playing and that kind of thing. Uh, some teams bring a little more of that edge to the game. Now, of course, last autumn you were in New Zealand because you were with Canada and you were playing in the World Cup. What was that like as an experience? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, being in a country where rugby is the focal point uh, being a big change from coming from Canada uh, just the pressure that uh, their national team was on and then the uh, exposure that it gave the rest of the teams there was was pretty unreal and which countries did you play against in the world? Uh, we had Tonga Japan France and New Zealand and which was the game that you enjoyed the most out of those would you say um, I think uh, you know the one that we always targeted well that I targeted I guess because uh, always wanted to play against the best in the world is, is that New Zealand game and, and how was that uh, it was good until the last couple of minutes. I don't remember too much of the last couple of minutes. It took a bit of a head knock. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just being able to be on the field. What was it like facing the hacker? Uh, we, we faced it a couple of times before. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that's their thing to get them ready for the game. Yeah. It's not really for us. But uh, it's, it's a neat cultural thing anyways. Now, look, I've got to say that you had a look about you during the World Cup that can only be described as Grizzly Adams. And uh, what was that about? Was that a charity thing or...? Uh, well, it turned out to be a charity thing, so it all ended up being for a good cause. But uh, no, originally I, um, I had a shoulder surgery, so I wasn't able to shave for a couple of months. Uh, it got to a pretty good length, so I figured uh, I might as well leave it and see how far it goes. And of course, then you decided to shave it all off after the World Cup. Did you? Was there any particular reason for that? Or uh, That was always the plan, is to, to shave it off. And then uh, with all the exposure I got, uh, um, it seemed like a good thing to do to uh, raise some money for charity. Brilliant. And it seems to be coming back a little bit here, I have to say, Cleve. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know if there's more charity going on here or you're just being lazy. Yeah, no, this is more the laziness factor. More <laughs> laziness factor, okay. Uh, now, you know, it, it's fair to say that we found it tough this second half of the season, um, playing the sides we have, and we've stepped up to the plate pretty well. And I thought, you know, none more so than Isha the other week away at Isha. That was a big game for us, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the last, I think it was five minutes on defence there, I think uh, that sort of... Uh, exemplifies what kind of a team we are. Uh, we know defense is such an important part of our game, and and just having the heart to close out that game was a big part of the season. And and great team spirit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he looked at the reactions of all the guys after the game, and um, you know, it was it was like we were halfway there to finishing the season. And how? I mean, had you heard of London Scottish? I mean, I guess from being at Rotherham, you may have heard of London Scottish. What was it that attracted you to the club? Um, uh, my uh, my agent told me that uh, the club had gotten in touch and. Uh, just seemed like a good opportunity and one not to miss. And have you enjoyed it so far? 
yeah, no, it's been great. The guys and the coaching and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the fan support and, uh, you know, everything's been great. It's quite a special, I mean, it, the heritage within the club is fantastic. If you look at it, the number of internationals, the number of British Lions captains and so on. I guess maybe in Canada, whilst you have great rugby clubs, they haven't got quite the depth of history that we have over here. Is that, is that fair to say? It definitely. I mean, as a country in general, we don't have the depth in history that England does. Um, but that's something we're trying to improve and we're working on. And, you know, a big part of our uh, Canada moving forward would be getting more of that media exposure, which we got in the World Cup. So hopefully that continues. Now, Watches of Switzerland, you're one of the six nominees for the uh, Supporters Player of the Season, which is a great accolade. As I say, you've only been with us for half the season or just over half the season. Now, given that this is the opportunity, we won't tell the others this, the other five, OK? This is your opportunity to shout out to the fans, to get them to vote for you. Why should they vote for you and not the other guys, do you reckon? Um, to be honest with you, I think, uh, you know, it's just a pleasure for me to be nominated in the same category as everybody else. I think the great thing about this award is that uh, the fans have complete say over um, who wins the award and uh, I'm sure they'll pick the right person. How diplomatic is that? And if that <laughs> doesn't get your votes, ladies and gentlemen, then I don't know what will. You know, um, we've got one more game left here against Disha on the 21st and there's, of course there's one more game away which I think is at Mosley uh, the weekend after next. Um, we're not safe yet. It's fair to say, and, and Isha's certainly going to be targeting, if they can, two wins. Um, so it's in our hands, isn't it? And I know the guys are up for it. We picked up a couple of injuries last weekend, but uh, what's the mood in the squad right now? Um, I think it's positive. Like you said, uh, the fact that we, we have say over what happens in the next couple of games, we can make the difference. Um, it's a much better position than having to result, uh, rely on other teams' results. So uh, I think the focus right now is just on this next game, and we'll, we'll take uh, Isha as it comes, but Moses has got to be the focus. Well, Klebs, look, I have to say, it's a great pleasure for me watching you from the stand. I, I sort of shudder every time I see you go into a hit because it's such a big hit. It's like a car crash. I think someone once told me that playing in the back row at this kind of level is the equivalent of having a 30-mile-an-hour car crash every week. And I tell you what, looking at the way it happens, I can see why they say that. But you've given us some great enjoyment. Good luck with your nomination. I, I have no side as to who wins. I'm sure you'll get a lot of votes out of this. The other guys will put their case forward. But long may it continue, and thanks for coming to the club. Thank you very much.